Okay, so now we're going to talk about something called recombinant DNA. So what is recombinant DNA? So it's recombining or combining two different portions of DNA together into a new overall portion. And this is typically done in research labs in order to be able to easily and quickly produce um, specific proteins. Um, so for example, or most of this work in recombinant DNA is done with E. coli. It's just well uh, studied. And so they know how it works really well. So that's why they use E. coli. Um, bacteria, or so E. coli is a bacteria and bacteria do not have a nuclei. They usually have a singular circular chromosome in their genome. So we have this kind of like X-shaped chromosomes. Um, however, bacteria just have a circular chromosome. And so they like using E. coli for this because then they just have that circle there. So plasmids are even smaller circular pieces of DNA. So this is like a plasmid or a cartoon version of a plasmid. It's just an order of DNA that goes around and around in a circle. And then it will have something like a start. And then this is your pro or your amino acid, I'm sorry, nucleic acid sequence. And then you have a stop. That's what the green and, and red represent. So what will happen is uh, in these plasmids, recombinant DNA, um, we'll see how you prepare it in a moment, but um, DNA can be transferred from one species of a bacteria to into E. coli. So this plasmid here of, um, plasmid of E. coli, they uh, digest with the restriction enzymes. So they take an enzyme that is going to cut out part of that uh, plasmid and open it up. And they call them these on the end sticky ends, but we'll talk about that in a moment with how we prepare it. And then our target gene, so whatever uh, DNA sequence we're trying to um, replicate is or make the protein of, we're going to add it in and it joins with the DNA of the plasmid and now makes a new recombinant plasmid. So that we changed the DNA of that circular chromosome for that uh, DNA. Okay, so how do we prepare this? Um, a DNA fragment from one organism is combined with DNA from another. Restriction enzymes are used to cleave the genes. Um, cleave the gene from a foreign DNA and an open DNA plasmids in E. coli. So I like this picture up here a little bit better. Um, we open it up, DNA fragments are mixed, and then the ligase, so that enzyme ligase is going to combine these ends, and the new gene um, in the altered DNA then can produce protein. So you make this new gene. Um, let's look at this picture here. So you have your DNA plasmids, you isolate the specific ones that you want, you use a restriction enzyme to chop them up into pieces, and you have something called sticky ends. Your sticky ends of each of your, of your plasmid and your uh, gene that you want from whichever DNA you're getting it from, they combine and make this new recombinant plasmid. This plasmid can then be replicated over and over, and then that green portion can then be used as, used as a code to make more protein or produce whatever protein you are trying to produce. Um, so there's a lot of different uses for this, um, particularly insulin, for example. Insulin, insulin is a protein or an enzyme your body needs, and so they can combine E. coli with this, uh, the DNA strand to make, pro, uh, I, uh, what's it called, insulin. And so you can just use those plasmids and feed it um, amino acids and all of the things it needs to just make over and over and over and make a bunch of your target uh, enzyme, or in this case, insulin. So these are other uh, therapeutics that have been made through this. Um, so insulin is that first one that we talked about, but uh, different things like the influenza vaccine. So flu vaccine is how we get this as well. And I'm pretty sure that's how the COVID vaccine is made as well. 
Um, we'll talk more about some recombinant DNA um, topics in our future videos.